Okay, I'd like to use this time to explain problem 1.3 here. Um, I have a little picture of it up in the corner, but they give us this company um, and they just started using um, their accounts. They have a cash balance, it says up in the top there, of $45,000. <clears> Following are their assets and liabilities for the company on January 31st, uh, 2022 and they give us revenues and expenses for the month of May. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through, we're gonna look through, um, whoops, that, I took, I take that back in the corner. Um, <clears throat> bring my text box back open. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through those accounts and we're gonna pull out the information that we need to create the income statement um, the st in the statement of retained earnings. So if we start, again, our income statement always starts with our revenues. So as we look through that list of what they give us, the only revenue I see is service revenue. Oops, is it going to let me go? of $6,800. <clears throat> Again, we look through it, I don't see any other revenues. So we would say, um, okay, our total revenues then are gonna be the same amount, $6,800. Then we'll come down and we'll look at our expenses. So if we go look through our lines, um, we I see advertising expense in that first column. I see rent expense, gasoline expense, and utilities expense. So we'll add those. $500 starts our advertising expense. Then we have rent expense. And again, this is kind of freehand, but I guess I'll, um, I'm gonna leave my, just have my top one with a dollar. What I'll do, I guess, though, is scoot you. Okay, so then we'll come in and our rent expense is 900. Then we move down and we have maintenance and repairs, and that too is an expense, and that is $350. We have gasoline expense. That's a little bit more, 2,500. And then finally, the last one is utilities expense. And then we'll total all those up. So we'll total all these up, but we've got $500 plus $900 plus $350 plus $2,500, and that gives me $4,250. Whoops, did I not put my utilities expense in there? All right, utilities expense $400. Then we'll total these up. So that is, hold on just a second, let me re add my M up because I now I'm not sure if I included the utilities, $4,650. Okay, so then now what we do is we take our total revenues and subtract those total expenses to come up with a total of net income. So in this case, our revenues are more than our expenses. 6,800 minus the 4,650 gives us $2,150 in net income. Okay, then if we come over, we can create a statement of retained earnings. So our statement of retained earnings, um, 
do we have a beginning balance? Let me let me see if I peek back over here. Did I copy everything that I needed to copy? Um, so, so it started on May 1st, so I guess there would be no beginning balances because this is just the month of their operations. So they just started operating May 1st, so there would be no beginning balance of retained earnings. And they did not pay out any dividends. So really, at that point, we don't have a beginning balance. We do have net income, though, that roll into it for that month. Which would be the $2,150. But then again, no, oh, no, I'm sorry. There it does say $500 of dividends were paid out. So then we'll subtract those. So then our ending retained earnings is going to be the $2,150 minus the $500 paid out in dividends. So that's going to be $1,650. Okay, then we would move over into our balance sheet. Now let me come back over to the problem. So the problem says... Um, I guess that we have all the information. I'm looking at just that part A here. So we're preparing the income statement, the retained earnings, and the balance sheet. So everything is given to us on that problem above. So we'll go ahead and use that data to, to figure out what our balance sheet is. So the first part of our balance sheet deals with our assets. So as we look up at our accounts up here, we have cash which is our first most liquid asset, and that is for um, $4,650. Then if we go to the next line item, we've got accounts receivable, and that is for $7,400. Then we have equipment for $64,000. Better? Okay, then we come down, we already dealt with our revenues and our expenses. Then we move into our payables. So that completes our assets. So we have total assets. We would sum those up. So $4,650 plus $7,400 plus $64,000. That gives us $76,050. Then if I come over um, and look at my liabilities and, my, and, and if there's any stockholders equity. So I've got accounts payable. That's If we look up here, that's the one on this side that I haven't dealt with yet. So our accounts payable is $1,400. Our notes payable is $28,000. And then our um, common stock, which it tells us, well, it doesn't list it down in here, it tells up us up here that they started by using common stock um, in exchange for the $45,000 in cash. So then that should be $45,000 of common stock that the company has. And then our retained earnings, again, that doesn't tell us in that table, but where we pull that number is from our statement of retained earnings. So that's the $1,650. So then when we total, our liabilities and our equity, we should balance.
And we do. So then we have $76,050. So the couple of things that might have been a little bit tricky to you is that when you read that, it, in this table, it doesn't show us our common stock anywhere, but you had to pick that up from reading. It told us that the company was started and they gave 45000 in cash in exchange for shares of common stock. So we knew that those common stock shares existed. And then as you're going from one statement to the other, some of these numbers just roll in. So once we calculated our net income, taking revenues less expenses, that rolled into our statement of retained earnings. And then our ending retained earning balance then rolled into our balance sheet. And then your final double check then is that your balance sheet actually balances. Okay, so that is what I wanted to cover with problem um, one dash three.